Hey everybody, Keith here with SideShot. Today we've got a fun little video on Apple's AirTags. Now, if you're not familiar with that, they are similar to the tile tracker devices that you've probably heard about. So SideShot does an unboxing to show you what these things are like and what they're all about. And then we do some kind of cool things because we were curious ourselves. For example, what happens if you don't own an iPhone, which I don't, and you want to use one of these things? Will it work? Or if you put it in somebody's car or pocket without them knowing, what we can see what happens with that. Or if you put it in like luggage on a plane, we can see what happens if we do that. All that coming right up. Keep watching everybody. unboxing episode we have the Apple AirTag. I have been very interested in this AirTag. It's a very cool thing and we're gonna get into it. So first thing that I notice is is a little tab we can pull that gets it open down here at the bottom. Okay, and then we have this little message. Um, all right. Oh, so here is the AirTag itself. It has some instructions on the inside, and there's more in the box, more instructions. And I see more instructions. More instructions. More, no, just kidding. There's no more instructions. All right, so I've looked at everything, and what we need to do is get a mobile device to connect this to. Um, so first, well, we need to get it out. Here's the AirTag itself, and I got a little message on it. It's just a little dog emoji. Pretty cool. Okay. Ah, that's a pretty sound. And it's very nice. I don't see any scratches or anything on it. I've heard this is very easy to scratch. So what we need to do is we need to go in the Bluetooth and then I'll be setting this up. All right, so I've just heard we need to get it closer and open the pull tab. Um, I'm very confused. There's not a lot of good instructions. All it says here is just get it um, updated to the latest OS and then turn on Bluetooth, but I'm not seeing that. Find my all right. So I think I figured it out here. Um, I just need to hit add AirTag. Aha, there it is. Connect. Um, you know what? I'm going to. This is going to be on a backpack we use. And there's all the information. It's going to be blurred out, but so you can't see any of it. But here it is. It's setting it up right now. Major's backpack. I love the sounds that this makes. Alright, with me, view and find my app. Alright, so it's with me right now. I can play a sound. Here's that. Alright, that, there that is. I can turn on lost mode. 
remove the item or rename it and I can give directions and I'll show that right now. All right, so I am going to go hide this. All right, so I think I have found a good spot just to place it right up there in the rocks. And we'll see how well this does. There it is. Okay, I just stopped recording and I got some directions. It's not really useful, but I think it'll do well. Let's see. So we have got directions. It says four minutes. I'm going to try to tap go. It's It says it'll take four minutes, but no thanks. Uh, wow, this is accurate. It's wanting me to go the right way. I'll tell you if I get any updates. So sadly, trying to find it on an iPad will not work with the Wi-Fi on. And if you did not get a Wi-Fi plus cellular iPad, then it will not work if you are trying to find it. It will work, but not that well. So I'll try to get back to you. Alright, so it knows right there and it is right there so we have found it well for part one at least we can say we tried all right guys so sideshot has taken you through some of the first few interesting things and tests that we've done with this air tag but we thought since this is the parts counter gurus what's gonna happen if we put this air tag in jay's car and not tell him and see if we can track him later. Now, Jay has an iPhone, but Jay does not use AirTags as far as we know. So what we're thinking is we're gonna hide it somewhere in his car where he won't know later today when we do a podcast recording, and then we'll come back here and see what happens. So keep watching for that. Hey guys, so we just secretly dropped the AirTag in Jay's car. And he's, we finished a photo shoot here on the Ford Mach-E, which by the way, if you haven't seen that, go check it out. You'll find a link to it on our website at parscounterguru.com, but I digress. We put that air tag in Jay's car. He didn't know it. I didn't even know when he put it in. I had no idea. I'm super sneaky. And so he just drove off the lot. We're here at Frontier Ford. Jay just drove off the lot, drove off the lot of the dealership, and we are tracking him. Now, Jay does have an iPhone, so let's see what we got here. And what you have to remember is if that AirTag is going with him and it keeps going with him, it will um, alert him. If it, if it goes with him for a while, it'll alert him somebody's stalking him or he's being followed. Um, and we'll see if he says anything about that. So... We are going to dinner with Jay later today, and we're gonna leave that thing in his car, and we're gonna see, as we continue to track it, how this goes. So we are literally tracking Jay with a Jay tracker right now, and he doesn't even know it. Can this AirTag work like that for anybody, and will it warn people that are the subjects of these um, secret tracking? Hold up. Did you just say J Tracker? Yeah, we got a J Tracker. Air tag. Yeah. All right, guys, keep watching. More to come. Hey, guys, so we just showed up to dinner here with Jay, and the first thing he said to us was, Hey, where is the air tag that you put on there? Okay, so how did you know? My iPhone alerted me to the fact that I was being, you know, tracked, basically, <laughs> with an air tag in my vicinity. It's in the hat box. I figured it had and that's to be something like that. The only place I could figure to like do the slide of hand. All right, guys. So we have one more test we're gonna do with this air tag. Side shot's about to get on a plane. I'm not. I'm gonna get I'm gonna drop him off. We're here at the airport, and I'm gonna get back to my iPad, and we're gonna see if I can track him on the plane. Will this thing work while he's in the air? So keep watching. We'll we'll see. All right, guys, so 
right now we can see that side shot is sitting at the airport terminal. I'm back on my iPad checking out his location. And uh, yep, right here, if we zoom out of the map, that is definitely SeaTac Airport. So he's going to get in the air in a few minutes. They actually just did a connecting flight from another airport, and he's on the ground right now. But when he gets back in the air, we are going to check back in and see if we can track this thing. All right, guys, so here's our update. Sideshot's plane left SeaTac about an hour and a half ago. And so far, now this is SeaTac. I'm going to zoom in on it right here. He was shown at our last update at the terminal here. Um, but interestingly enough, he got, I got a ping from his um, air tag 53 minutes ago, and he's 84 miles away from me. I am not at SeaTac, so uh, he's not quite that far away from SeaTac, but you can see here that's southeast of Seattle, um, almost due east of Tacoma. And again, um, that was probably about 20 minutes into the flight. So it looks like we got some sort of a ping back earlier in the flight. So I will check this again in a little while and we'll see if it updates at all. But as of right now, and I do know that there is Wi-Fi available on the plane. Um, I don't know if anyone will use that or if any phones on the plane will access the Wi-Fi uh, I'm not even sure if lo location information would be available, but again, at this point, it shows a little bit of movement. Um, it's not completely accurate with where his flight is, though. All right, guys, so I was able to find this. Side shot is flying from Seattle, Tacoma, SeaTac to Nashville. And FlightAware shows that he is just about to uh, cross over into Wyoming. He's actually flying right over Yellowstone National Park, uh, or he will be in just a few minutes. Um, it looks like he's over Montana right now with Idaho here and Wyoming here. So it looks like he's going to cut across the southern boundary of Montana in just a little, little while. Um... So again, comparing that to the AirTag tracker, which had him um, in this area about 55 minutes ago, right in here, which could that that actually could have been accurate 55 minutes ago. Uh, so we will compare these two and keep an eye on it. All right, guys, another o update here for you. Um, this is about 10 minutes after our last update and some pretty cool information here. So our last reported area was right here. And now I'm seeing that side shot is, in fact, in the southeast corner of Washington state. Uh, this was as of 31 minutes ago. Um, and so it, that actually probably was accurate because about 31 minutes ago, he would have been, uh, somewhere in that area. Uh, his flight path does follow. You can see here kind of over into and uh, across Idaho and into Southern Montana. So that is pretty interesting to me. Now, if we double back over here and check flight aware for the flight status, let me refresh that and see where it's going to have him. So it shows him as of right now just about to cross over into the northern border of Wyoming. He's traveled, I think, the last time we checked. Again, this was about 10 minutes ago. It was a little bit uh, west there. So this is interesting. This means that somehow that AirTag is, is transmitting location information. Um back. Now, I'm. it's showing that he's actually 273 miles away from me, so that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I'm up here in the uh, northwest corner. 
So this is, uh, you know, the whole experiment of do, do the air tags work on a plane? Apparently they work a little, little bit. Um, at, at the very least, I mean, it's giving me accurate location information. It just isn't up to the minute. All right, guys, another update. This time, side shot is 899 miles away. And he is showing up as of nine minutes ago. Let's see if we can get this to show us. Oh, as of one minute ago. Perfect. Okay, so he is now... Oh, interesting. Okay, so it... it the tracker location... Oh, just moved. Here we go. Sweet. This is showing him in eastern Wyoming, just east of Casper. Um, and then let's double back over to the Flight Aware Tracker and see, as of now, if that's even close. So let's refresh this and look at that. So it's a little bit behind now. I believe this might be estimated uh, in terms of the Flight Tracker. Um, but, uh, it, it's probably a little bit more accurate than the AirTag if I had to guess. The, but the point of this is we are getting similar results in terms of location of the plane from the AirTag and from a flight tracker like FlightAware. So that's pretty cool. Um... And, you know, keep in mind that plane's doing a little over 600 miles an hour. So to be able to provide recent tracking data on that uh, from an air tag, that's pretty great. Okay, guys, another about 25, 20, 25 minutes. And this time we've got side shot in Nebraska. So, uh, oops. So, um, I would say at this point... And we've been doing this now for about an hour um, in terms of the tracking, a little bit more than an hour. We've got some pretty great uh, results. Sideshot did tell me that he's sitting next to a lady on the plane with uh, an iPhone. So that's kind of interesting. Um, you know, Sideshot does not have an iPhone. He does have an iPad. And this was six minutes ago. Let's double check the uh, flight aware for flight status and see if it has him in the same location. So that's going to be right here. And we will update that. And okay, so it does show him in Nebraska on the flight tracker site also, although he's a little bit further east on this. Um, so, but not bad. Not bad at all for a device that's really not designed to do this. So there you go. All right, so one more quick update here. FlightAware has him over Missouri, actually almost near St. Louis. But if we go back and we check Find My, this is kind of interesting. Four minutes ago it had him over South Dakota, which is not in the flight path. So this is, uh, you can see here, the flight path was, I think, more over Nebraska and then cutting south into southeast into Missouri. So he's actually here and four minutes ago, um, he's here and four minutes ago, Find My had the air tag up here in South Dakota on the eastern side. And again, if we look at the flight path, um, just barely touched the southwestern corner of South Dakota and that's it. So that is not accurate. Um, not that I really, I, honestly, it's done better than I expected, but there's our first kind of miss, mislocation. All right, so one last update on side shot. He is about to land in Nashville now. 10 minutes ago, the Find My App had his air tag at, uh, actually, it was at Prince, it was over Princeton, Kentucky. Now it just jumped back to Kansas City. I'm not sure if you can see that. Jumped right back there to Kansas City. Where he actually is, is this is more accurate. Um, he's just crossing over the Kentucky-Tennessee state line there. 
So um, probably, I'm going to guess, maybe about 15 minutes from, from touchdown. Um, but uh, yeah, again, one more time back to the air tag. It's close. Uh, when he hits the ground, we'll update one more time. Um, it's kind of bouncing all over the place right now. It's got him back in Missouri. So stay tuned. We'll give a wrap up here in just a minute. All right, everyone. So as he's about to land here in Nashville, uh, he's at 1,500 feet, uh, according to FlightAware. And interestingly enough, going back to find me at my... Uh, ooh, well, look at that. It's got him right over by the airport in Nashville. So the airport is right here. And it's showing him just north, which I believe is his true flight landing path. So it's pretty cool. Um, he got back into a lower altitude and the accuracy really improved, uh, but also probably they shut the plane Wi-Fi off and, uh, it was dependent on cell towers, uh, on the, on the ground. So there you go. Uh, is it possible to tag, t to track your air tag on a flight? With our experience, it is. All right, guys. So in closing... I'm pretty impressed with these air tags. As a longtime tile user, I, I was very skeptical. I felt at first like the air tags were just a copy of what tile was already doing. Certainly, Apple didn't get to the market first with this idea, but they do have some improvements on what others have done in the past, and I think that makes it worthwhile. So, hope this has been helpful to you guys, and we will catch you next time. Uh, no, no, no. You have to remember, we say this all the time. Remember to like all of our videos, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when we upload. What he we said. We're going to forget. Thanks, everybody.